Hi guys, welcome back to a, another GGF video. Now today we're going to be just doing something a little bit different. Uh, might be doing this on a weekly, uh, fortnightly basis where we sort of recap uh, some of the videos we've done in the past few weeks and unbox a lot of gear of the work and projects we have going on. Before I start, um, I may look a little bit red in places. I did go to the beach today and um, unfortunately I don't know how to put sunscreen on properly so I did get quite a bit burnt. So. Uh, just bear in mind with that. Now this video might go for a long time because as you can see, there is so much gear here I have to go through. I'm just gonna be unboxing gear, uh, sort of going through what it will be used for, where it will be at and so on. Um, I've got a drink here ready to go because it is hot down here. So we'll start off with the humongous, uh, probably travel case. Uh, you've probably seen this before from Fantex. This is the Enthu Elite uh, chassis. Now this thing is huge. Uh, you've probably seen a photo I've done already. Uh, I think in Australia this is going to be about $1,100, $1,200. This is Fantex Ultimate Premium Case, as for the name, the Elite. It is just insane. Uh, I can't unbox this now while it's already out. I needed a second person to help me lift this out because there's no way I could lean over and pull this out. It actually comes in this travel case. This thing is absolutely huge. Uh, it's pretty much, yeah, I would say that's like a meter, a nearly a meter by a meter, so it is quite large. So we could get that out of the way. I might actually just use this as a table. Uh, it's good enough, it's nice and solid. I'm not sure what I'll use this for in the future. It's not like I'll be taking the case to land parties and stuff like that. Well, it would be nice, but it's gonna weigh a ton. I can barely lift it with the case empty. So once it's full, it's going, going to be insane. Um, we might get some stuff out. Uh, this is kind of in the way, kind of blocking uh, some stuff. So we'll just get this out. What's in here? You've probably seen us post a photo of this. This is the insane ASRock Super Carrier motherboard. I, I keep on thinking supercomputer, but it is super carrier. I'm not sure where they got that name from, but it is a pretty cool, I might just throw these out of the way. Pretty cool name. Uh, this thing is absolutely insane. Uh, there's just so much going on. Uh, some of the highlight features on this has got uh, Thunderbolt 3, so 40 uh, gigabits there. It's got the new uh, five gigabit ethernet. Uh, it's, like, it's called a, a Quaintier or something like that. Um, it does follow the new standard that's coming in. It is five gigabit. I'm not sure how many people can utilize that. Um, I can test it here because I have quite a bit of 10, uh, 10 gigabit ethernet gear. But from what I believe, there's no actual five gigabit switches or anything like that. So if you want to utilize the five gigabit, you need 10 gigabit uh, infrastructure to get it to work. So I think um, maybe later on down the track, there will, be, uh, there will be support for it. Okay, so this is the board here. Um, what ASRock do with all their motherboards, which is insane, uh, all four corners are completely zip tied uh, down into this bit of foam, which is pretty insane that someone has to sit there and zip tie uh, every single board in their boxes. But I've already taken those off because I just have to cut them. And that is the board there. So really, really nice color scheme. Another main feature is of course it has the PLX chip. So simply on uh, platforms like your previous Z97, uh, Z170 and now the Z270, there's just not enough lanes uh, for, from the CPU to run four way for your graphics. And that includes Crossfire and SLI. So what, uh, what they do is they throw on a PLX that gives you extra lanes so you can run uh, four cards all at 8x. So 8x, 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 or two at 16x. So pretty sweet uh, board there. It saves you having to go to X99, forking out that little bit more for a CPU and stuff like that. But, in today's sort of trend, four-way, uh, the way that NVIDIA is going, it's going to be tough uh, even to get any games working on that. It's really just for benching. But I guess for AMD, well, the future's pretty bright, so I guess we'll, um, we'll have to see uh, how that pans out for them. I might just move some of the stuff over here. So yeah, very nice board. We're actually doing a, um, make sure my mic doesn't come, we're actually doing a Computex build. We've been invited to Computex by Thermaltake. Uh, we will be doing another tower build for them. So we'll be, we'll be using that board in the uh, white tower. So that'll look really sweet for that. And I'll be doing an unboxing and a quick look at that, um, at that board. And I will be testing the four-way uh, 1080. So we'll see how that goes. It's pretty much just gonna be a few benchmarks, whichever I can get to run that will support it. Uh, this little beast here is the ASRock Gaming ITX AC. Very nice little board. Uh, it, it is red. So if you like your red uh, color schemes. Now it does come in this, um, really, I guess they don't make any static bags for ITX boards, so I guess the next best thing is put it in a full, uh, full-size static bag and just wrap it around. So that's a little little board there, very nice. 
We're actually doing a, um, you may be familiar, we did a recent Zotac build for their uh, CS booth. Uh, they hit us up again, we're doing one for their Computex booth. Now this is the board here. You're not gonna see too much of the board, so that's why I'm not too concerned about it being red, but I can easily paint those if it is seen. So that's a really nice board there. It's got your AC wireless, uh, it's got M.2 on the back, and it's on the Z270, so pretty much desktop, desktop size board jammed into that little form factor there. Um, so that's those two. I'm just trying to see if I can do this in some kind of order or until I don't run out of um, out of room. And that super carrier comes with a heap of features, a heap of um, accessories, it's insane. So be sure to uh, check out that video as well when I do the video on that. Um, we'll just start going through random boxes. I think I've got a, kn a knife down here. Um, so yeah, doing just a recap on some of the videos I've uploaded in the last uh, week or two. Uh, just went up tonight or last night was the uh, Secret Labs uh, Secret Labs Titan gaming chair. Very, very nice chair. Probably the top chair I have tested and used so far. So be sure to check out that one. Uh, also the new Thermal Tape Ring uh, Plus fans. Did a video on those. Very nice fans. And then we did a bit of a build time lapse uh, build video on the Thermal Take View uh, 31 case as well. So be sure to check out that one as well. Very, very nice case. And we'll be doing the full video review on that case uh, in the next few days as well. Um, actually, I probably, yeah, this this is for this green, uh, humongous little green. It's actually an ITX case, but it's in quite a large, uh, quite a large box. This is the Antec Cube, which is designed, created, or created by Antec and co-designed with Razer. Uh, they've got two versions. I think they've got three. They've got the standard Antec version. They've got an EK version and the Razer version. So of course, I had to go out the Razer, uh, Razer version, bring in the fanboys and do an all green build. So we'll have a look at that um, in a tick. But for um, I hit up a Vexia for support for uh, RAM. It's pretty hard to get uh, green everything for a build when it comes to SSDs, RAM, video cards like that. So they've, uh, they've sent us some uh, green Vexia Raiden. Very, very nice stuff. Uh, we've used, uh, I think we've used some dummy stuff with this before on builds, but um, it is really nice. And then you've got the, um, I won't open this one, but the Vexia, uh, this is the S100 SSD. It is white. Um, I did this previously on a build where I just painted the white black and it does uh, blend in a lot better because there's not going to be much white uh, on this build at all. It's pretty much going to be all black and green. And I do have a reference uh, 980 Ti coming and I think I might just swap out the uh, glowing GeForce logo if you're familiar with the stock. A stock cooler on the uh, non ATRs. I'll swap that with a like a black razor logo that pulsates uh, green, which would be pretty sweet. Um, this little unit here is a Antec Edge. Uh, what is this? 550 watt. That should be enough to run just a 980 Ti. It's not going to be doing anything too fancy. 550 will be uh, plenty of juice, and this will just be the unit to um, to run the build in the uh, Antec Razor case. Now, I'm not even sure what even color this looks like. Oh, it looks kind of black. I'm just trying to keep everything everything in theme, but in saying that, I can always just paint um, paint things and that, but I try to not have to go to all that effort. So let's have a look at this little unit. I have used these before. They actually are nice little units. They do have a, um, a glowing LED inside, but when I say that, I'm pretty sure the lead is blue, but um, might have to do some modifications and change that. Now, it does have these sort of dampeners, um, these little square things. Now, these go on like each on the front and on the back, and I think that just stops vibration, something like that, and it does kind of look cool, so I'll definitely use the black ones. I won't be using the red ones in a Razer build. So that's a nice little unit there. I'm pretty sure you can't even see the PSU in the um, in the Razer case. I've had a quick look. I'm pretty sure it has a PSU cover anyway. So yeah, shout out to Antec for sending all of that. I did have some of their RGB fans. I think they might be, um, Antec have released some brand new RGB fans, uh, which is pretty sweet. So I got three of those for the um, for the Razer build. I really don't think uh, it can fit any more than three unless you do push-pull, and you're not going to fit push-pull on the front of that little case. Um, actually, no, this is um, this is a cable mod order. I'll come back to that later on. Um, that's a heap of gear from, um, from cable mod. I think this is, um, yeah, this is the one over here. I'm just trying to do it in a, a little bit of, uh, Unity, so we're not all um, all confused. Uh, these are the cables that I got from Piece of Case Gear for the Razer build, but I'm not quite sure if they will be right. I do have another set of fluoro cable mod cables. Um, I just wanted a backup. I'll probably use the fluoro ones because, as you can see, the data is completely wrong. If the fluoro ones aren't right, if these aren't right, I'll simply just go with black cables because 
Um, I can't stand builds that I just have like six different blues or six different reds. I'm not sure if that's anyone else, but that's just me. Um, Antec fans, these are RGB. Uh, I had a quick look at these. These are just simply, um, these are quite funky. It's like the whole fan blade is chrome, a complete chrome. It's like a mirror. Once it spins, it's pretty cool. Uh, you simply just plug this in. It's not the uh, PWM standard fan header, and it's got a little switch here. So you just simply switch it through. You've got static colors, you've got rainbow, you've got things like that. It's not uh, individual LEDs along it. They're just single single LEDs. So the whole fan will be either red, either green, or it can fade in and out to different colors. So I'll no doubt just be setting that to green or maybe white, depending on how the build sort of uh, plans out in the end. But yeah, nice. Um, Nice fans there. Um, these are nothing too really special here. Uh, for the Fantex um, Elite case, it comes support, can fit 13, uh, 13 hard drives. Uh, I needed more than that. Oh, not more than that, about 13, but they only give you six uh, three and a half inch hard drive brackets by default in the actual case. So uh, PC Case Gear, who also sent me the, um, the awesome uh, Elite case, uh, I bought some of their uh, brackets, and I'm pretty sure PC Case Gear are the only people who can get the Fantex gear, uh, uh, the only store you can get Fantex gear from. So they have all their accessories. These are just one of the many brackets they have, and this is the one that fits the Elite. So I picked up uh, one, two, three, four, five more of these to deck out the Elite with like 11 to 12 hard drives. So that'll um, that'll um, really sort of help out because I really do like my storage, and I was going from a massive Thermaltake case down to the uh, Elite. So Thermaltake are known for all their storage, so I needed to come up with a solution to get all um, to get all that going, um, we might go through. All uh, right, so this is the motherboard for the uh, Razer build over here. Now I needed something that wasn't coloured. Um, I think today is getting easier on boards. Uh, boards are sort of moving towards your black, your silvers, or your white. So choosing colours isn't too bad. Back in the old days, you used to have reds, blue, all crazy colours. So this is the, um, I hit up MSI. This is the MSI Carbon um, Pro uh, Gaming, ZG7i Gaming Pro. Uh, it's pretty much uh, RGB on the side. I've, I've seen mixed sort of uh, reviews about the onboard lighting. They said that's not RGB. So I need to test this and see what actual color the onboard lighting and if there even is any, I can't really see too many uh, little LEDs or surface mount LEDs or anything. So I will be doing an unboxing and video on this board separately. So I will fire it up on the test bench and see if I can uh, get any LEDs on the board. If not, it does have it on the side here. You've probably seen um, on product videos and, uh, and sort of showcase banners where they have the lights coming off the side. Now that is RGB, so no doubt I'll set that green and that should look pretty sweet in the, uh, in the Razer build as well. And that also does have M.2 on the back, which is pretty nice. All right, so that's the um, that's the board for the Razer case. While we're talking about the Razer case, I may as well just move that down. I may as well talk about or pull this one out. It is in quite a large um, a large case. I think the best thing is to just flip it. Hopefully, nothing breaks. Because I actually originally saw this at Computex. Uh, Computex last year they had sort of a prototype on it, and I just never really thought it was going to come to. Uh, come to market and then it just popped up on, um, I don't know where I saw it, saw it somewhere on Facebook. So, um, so yeah, quite surprised that it actually did come to market. So it's quite a unique looking thing. Now it's no means by really small when it comes to ITX. When you think of ITX, you really do think of, um, of little small cases. So this is the system here. I'm just trying to get it to sort of um, compare it to something. It's hard to say. It's not as high as a lot of cases, but it's more sort of wide and thickness wise. So if we move it to the front, as you can see, that's the front there. The Razer logo does uh, does light up red, which is really nice. It's got plenty of, um, it may look a bit weird, but this is just um, protective sort of uh, stickers they've got on this, so it just doesn't scratch. I'm not quite sure what the, what the material is. Um, the top kind of feels like metal, but I would say that it's plastic. It's like, a, feels like a plastic metallic material. I was kind of thinking the sides would have been a um, steel or a metal of some sort because I think this retails for 299 Australian, so it is quite expensive. I'm not sure if that's just the, ra the Razer um, version or something, but yeah, I would have thought it might have been aluminium on the back. Now this is inverted, so this is your side panel and the, the motherboard uh, sort of goes inverted, so your GPU will run along the top 
Now, if I get this right and can fit it in, I'm hoping to put one of my little screens just in the top here, so it's got this viewing for like your stats and your, your temp sensors. But if you look at the back, you get a better idea or better view from when I say the inverted on the side. So your GPU will run along the top, so you'll actually see the GPU from the top. But yeah, very nice little case. The quality is really nice. Um, even if it is plastic, it really doesn't feel like it is. So I guess if they've saved a bit of cost there, uh, why not? It does look nice. All the front's really nice. So that'll make a nice beastie, uh, beastie little system. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. So yeah, shout out for Antec for sending that, um, sending that out. It's actually pretty sweet that now Antec, uh, Antec and Razer are sort of collaborating and you're actually seeing a Razer case. I don't think there are any um, any razor cases um, i think they've done some other things um some smaller things but um but yeah i'm um, moving on to this order here um this is a cable mod order um i am doing a wp200 build which is a humongous dual system thermal tape build uh i placed the cable mod order and halfway through or when i finished it i ended up changing the whole cold color theme and did a, a new order um, i messaged the guy and said look can you cancel the first order uh, I just need a second order. Then, um, unfortunately, they shipped both orders. So I ended up with pretty much enough cable mod gear to last me for an eternity. So there's LED strips, there's, uh, there's just endless cables. So the original color I was going with was a titanium for one side of, of the system because it takes two full ATX systems. I was gonna go the titanium on one side and then the carbon on the other side. I've already got a set of carbon from the uh, D-frame build I did, so I was gonna do uh, the titanium and carbon, but I thought there's not too much contrast in colors having one black and one gray. So then I wanted to scrap this order and do, I picked up the uh, MSI X99S uh, X Power, it's that yellow and black one. So I wanted to have one yellow and black and then one carbon. I think that'll contrast a lot better. I can theme the case and do like yellow sort of uh, paint marks on the side of it, something like that, something a, a little bit different. And but yeah, I just ended up with a ton of cables, which is just, insane so yeah i really don't know what to do with them but i think the amount of builds i do and push out i'll definitely be able to and especially having all this color spare and being such a neutral color white and gray i'll definitely be able to utilize that in a build even just re reviewing cases i just like to put in sleeve cables um, i'll just quickly clear as much as this up and i'll go through some of the other stuff because it's taken quite a while to get through all of this all right so that's that um, this one here, oh, some of these are already open because I just went through them to make sure um, this is what I ordered and the right stuff. Uh, this is Coolmaster. You've probably seen we posted a photo on the Coolmaster Mastercase 5T. So the T is the turbo, it's like red. Uh, we will be using the uh, ASRock uh, Z270 Gaming K6 board. It matches perfectly. We're doing a build with that. We actually um, have an Alpha Alpha Cool a uh, lot of gear coming. They've um, they reached out to us if we wanted to do some videos on some of their water cooling gear and do a build. So that's the first time we've really used Alpha Cool, being sponsored by Alpha Cool. So we're doing a build with that in the Cool Master 5T. So Cool Master have sent us a bunch of their fans. I actually didn't even know they did uh, RGB fans. So that, that's a first for me. Um, when I mean RGB, is their controller controllerless uh, RGB fans. So. They don't actually have any sort of RGB controller. They just have a uh, RGB strip uh, in the fan, and then it's up to you to either plug them onto the motherboard, a standard RGB strip header, or if you buy a splitter, and you can say plug them into a cable mods uh, RGB controller, and then you can just control them. So, so that's something a, a little bit different. I actually don't even know the price of these. Um, I will be doing an unboxing and a quick testing on these fans just to see how they look. I've sort of. Uh, uh, tested one of them and because the blades are clear you do get a really cool effect as well so something just a little bit different um, for those fans and then of course just the power supply for that uh, for that Cooler Master build as well just the V850 I've used these before very very nice uh, power supplies indeed um, having a look at this one oh, where has the knife gone there it is don't want to stand on it Uh, this is some thermal tape gear. So for the WP200 build, which is essentially all this tape now, I wanted to wait until I had all the gear in the photos. That'll be an eight GPU system. Um, I'm not sure how many systems in the world have had eight GPUs. So it'll have eight uh, NVIDIA 980s in it, uh, four in each side. So it takes two systems, so it'll be two 
four-way SLI uh, X99 systems in the one case. So it's gonna be humongous. I already had some gear for one side. I wasn't going to do the two systems in one, but I thought, why not? It's a humongous case, so let's just go nuts. So these are the remaining four uh, 980 water blocks, uh, the GPU blocks, uh, the four-way bridge, just to get everything exactly the same, except for sort of like the cables and the motherboard and things like that. And these are the brand new, uh, Brand new thermal take uh, Pacific W4 RGB block. Just bear in mind, they're not uh, independent LEDs, so they're just one static color, so either blue, red, green, um, or whatnot. And we got two of those, one for each side in the uh, WP200 build. So yeah, that build will be insane. I'm not sure how much modding I'll do. Probably just keep it clean, just do like a motherboard train, and I'll just try and pass through the cables as much as I can, just to do a really clean build. All right, I'm pretty sure this one down here, I think I know what that is. I probably don't need to bring it up. Going by the size of it, I'm pretty sure that is just, yeah. So this is just the remaining radiators for the WP200 build. I think I can fit about four or five, four or five 480 uh, 60 millimeter uh, radiators inside the WP200 once it's got two full systems in. So that's pretty insane, mainly because it's got that humongous pedestal at the bottom and it is a double wide case. So yeah, that'll be humongous. Can fit all those rads in it. Uh, some other things you've probably seen are these new PCI uh, extender cables or riser cables from Thermaltake. These are um, probably some of the best you can get. There's been a lot of people uh, aren't happy with the uh, ones that come with their cases. And I will agree, uh, I've had issues with them in the, in the past. They're very, very delicate, the uh, original ones. You bend them, uh, pins can sort of snap on the edge. They're very fragile, but these ones are much, much better. Thermaltake have done testing on, on their website. Other people have done testing, and these ones nearly have pretty much 0% uh, latency. I'm not sure about their meter one. They've got one which is a meter. That's absolutely huge. I'm not sure who needs to run their GPU um, a meter from their uh, 16 by slot, but hey, if you're modding something, it's a cool idea. So this one here is a 60 centimeter, and this is huge. So I use the 30 a 30 centimeter in the view 31 build and I still had plenty of room to spare that simply just had to go down and have the uh, GPU vertical um, and, but yeah that's pretty much it very very different uh, very easy to bend now because you've got sort of chunks of one two three four five so it allows you to sort of group them a bit more you can scrunch them do lots of stuff so um, if you're a modder these pretty much are the cables for you and then we've got nice thermal take uh, sort of on that side and on that side as well so nice um, nice cables there um, people have been asking, will they be putting these in their cases from now on? Um, the answer is pretty much no. To get this high quality and this standard quality of cable is worth quite a lot. I think the standard, the smallest one, starts at about $60, $70, and it goes up from there. So say like a thermal take uh, P3 cost, um, the core P3 cost, uh, I think it's about $180. I don't think many people are going to want to pay an extra 100 just to get the, uh, the cable. And not everyone is going to be using a riser cable in their builds because you don't have to mount your GPUs vertically, you can still mount them the other way as well. Uh, PC Case Gear who also sent me the Elite, they sent me the, this is a real force um, from uh, Topra, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar, I hadn't heard, heard of them. Um, this keyboard is pretty insane, it's the number one selling keyboard in Japan, um, it retails for about 300, anywhere from 300 to $350. It's um, really insane keyboard now what makes this so different is uh topra make their own switches it's not cherry it's it's not kale it's nothing it's not one of those it's their own switches but what you can do is you can change the actuation points of each key or the whole keyboard uh within their software on the fly so you can change them from i think 0.5 millimeter to one and then 1.5, or it might be from 0.5 to 1.5 to 2.5, but you can change, you have three different settings and you can change them. Um, and that's pretty insane. I haven't seen any keyboard on the market where you can actually change the actuation point. So basically you're getting like a cherry uh, switch keyboard that has like the different colors or, or, or sort of, you've, you've also got things like um, how hard to press and the different clicks, but you're just changing the actuation point which is when you press down, when it triggers the actual key. So that's pretty insane that you can do that, change that on the fly. You can also get a whole heap of other add-ons for this keyboard, like uh, sort of rubbers to add on, on individual keys. Of course, it's RGB. Uh, very, very nice backlighting. 
you've probably seen inside that the keyboard is actually all sort of, they've actually laid a whole white cover. And then when the RGB lights off this, it looks really, really nice. Something it's hard to describe. I will be doing a review on this and see how it goes. I'll probably take this to work and use it as my main keyboard for a bit, because if you kind of, um, I don't even know what, I think they just call it their, their Topra switch or something, because it's not categorized as, as a color, because I think that's all they have. So if you try and um, listen to this, it's, if I would sustain anything, it probably sounds like a brown. Um, if anything, in the cherry scale of, uh, of colors. But yeah, definitely um, very, very interesting keyboard. You don't have to install the, the software. You can change the uh, actuation points just by hitting FN and this key here. And then it changes the whole keyboard to sort of the whole, the whole keyboard goes green to say it's done. And then uh, in like five seconds, it goes back to whatever color profile you had, whether it was all IGB, stuff like that. So very, very interesting keyboard there. I can now see why it's worth 300, 350 only because it's got that unique feature and it's got a heap, heap of other stuff as well which I will cover in the uh, video as well but I think that is it a huge amount of gear I've gone through um, pretty much yeah that, that's pretty much all the stuff coming up in the next um, the next few weeks I'll be working on the uh, elite build uh, working on I've just started to do the second part of the affordable workstation build uh, video just a basic uh, nothing water cooled nothing fancy just a build that you can use for uh, for editing it's going to have redundant storage it's going to have a uh, it's going to have a scratch drive just things like that a lot of things that people miss when they they set up a, a workstation or a rendering system and things like that um, and yeah the cool master build I uh, have to do as well that's going to be pretty cool with ultra cool gear and then also finish the review on the View R31 as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, heap of gear here. Uh, thumbs up if you want to see see more of these, maybe every. Um, I don't get a lot of gear all the time. This is probably the most amount of gear I've received in a few weeks. So I'll probably do this on that, maybe even a monthly basis, a fortnightly basis, depending on how much gear I have. But this has gone for pretty long. I'm trying to read the camera now. I think it's up to about 25, 30 minutes. So if I can try and get these down to say 10, 15 minutes of all the gear I get, on a fortnightly basis, that'll be pretty super. Yeah. Just want to thank all these companies for sending this out. Uh, make sure you check out Facebook and our YouTube for all the uh, videos on these products. And thanks for watching, stay tuned for next time.